Gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates. Yield to Mr. Roy. I thank the gentleman from Florida. Uh, I thank the witnesses for being here. Um, I just want to clarify the record here for a second. Uh, the idea that the fact that fentanyl is caught at ports of entry uh, and that that is the only place that that is coming through is belied by the facts and is belied by the facts that the Border Patrol is now distracted processing human beings just as the judge from El Paso just described, but just ignores the impact on what that does to the actual border, the Border Patrol can't possibly catch all of the fentanyl at the ports of entry, nor catch the fentanyl between the ports of entry. Mr. Daniels, do you agree with that assessment? I do. We've had a depletion in Border Patrol because they've been taken to other areas where processing is more important. And is it your experience that fentanyl pours in between the ports of entry and, and that fentanyl does in fact get into our communities in mass quantities today due to our open border? Yes. I appreciate that. Now, Mr. Dunn, um, obviously in the introduction, I talked about you being from the county in which I live, in Hayes County. You testified, Mr. Dunn, earlier that it was not just Noah who passed away in Hayes County last year due to fentanyl poisoning in our community. Uh, is it not true that three other Hayes Independent School District students died from fentanyl overdoses in our community in Hayes County last summer? Is that accurate? That's correct, and a fourth 14-year-old died in January of this year. Just a couple of weeks ago? Yes. Another and family. And during the Christmas break, six other students were poisoned by fentanyl, but they were successfully saved. And last summer, there were another eight who were brought back through the use of Narcan. Is that correct? Correct. Um, Mr. Dunn, uh, your lovely bride, Janelle, is Hispanic, yes? Yes. Uh, do you believe that believing in a secure border makes one racist or anti-Hispanic? Not in the slightest. Um, her family actually holds that same position. I thank you for that. Uh, you guys have been active now in a number of organizations um, uh, in the, trying to get out and understand the lost voices of fentanyl. Is that right? Yes. Worked with Ms. Virginia Krieger. Yes. And she's lost her daughter due to Percocet that was laced with fentanyl. Is that correct? Yes. And the people that have been the lost faces of fentanyl, and I've, I've done this before. Noah is one of these lost voices due to fentanyl now. Uh, he is now. I'm not sure if he's included in that picture. But. And these pictures are the faces of Americans who are no longer with us due to fentanyl flowing throughout our communities. Now, these are young individuals who are not here today. Now, Noah's not here today. Do you care precisely whether or not fentanyl is coming through ports of entry or between ports of entry, or was your family directly impacted because fentanyl is flooding into our communities one way or the other? However it gets here is, it's here. And in your experience talking to other family members and talking to law enforcement personnel, is it your observation and belief that the overwhelming flood at our borders, distracting Border Patrol from being able to carry out their duty to stop the flow between the ports of entry or do inspections at the ports of entry, is resulting in more fentanyl pouring into our communities that is then resulting in the death of Americans and, in fact, the death of migrants in the process. Yes, um, most of the, the fathers um, that I speak with that are not as vocal as the mothers um, the common thing they've expressed to me is to come up here and let people know that, that it's, a, it's a border issue. It's not an immigration issue. It's flooding across the borders because there's a problem at the borders. In your communication with families who have lost loved ones due to fentanyl poisonings, do you believe that it is an imperative, an imperative that this country's federal government, who has a constitutional obligation to secure the border of the United States, do so in order to ensure that we stop the flow of fentanyl and dangerous and illicit narcotics into the United States, resulting in the death of Americans? Yes. Do you believe that if this country adopted policies that enabled us to restrict and stop the flow of fentanyl, and that that includes ensuring that we have no longer a flood of human beings at our border while still maintaining asylum laws and protecting people who are being persecuted under actual threat of persecution for their religious political beliefs. 
Do you believe that stopping the flow of individuals, enabling Border Patrol to stop fentanyl, that that is a critical imperative, and if that were adopted, would help save lives like Noah's? I do, and most others that I talk with feel the same way. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Thank you, Janelle. Gentlemen, I yield back. Time has expired. Uh, the gentleman from Rhode Island, Mr. Cicilline.